Hey guys, how's it going? John Whitford here, and I'm joined with Sean Clark for this amazing interview. You're going to absolutely love some of the nuggets of wisdom Sean's going to drop for us today. So Sean Clark is a co-founder and the CEO of High Level, the number one white label marketing platform for agencies. Prior to High Level, Sean founded, operated, and sold Invoice Sherpa, a SaaS company that continues to help thousands of businesses around the world get paid faster. Sean, I am so excited for this conversation. Thanks for joining me today. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Awesome. So, Sean, you have a crazy story between software, marketing, and all of that. I see something really unique that I want to drive our conversation today, going down that software route. So many of my audience are diving in, picking out the right tools, picking out the right offers, and picking out service or software. How do they want to serve their community? So I'm so excited to get in there. But before we do, tell me a little bit about yourself. Kind of give me a high-level overview of how you came to being a software founder for multiple companies. Sure, absolutely. So uh, I'm a software engineer by trade. Um, always been that geeky kid who you know, love to be heads down on a keyboard. And uh, so I've always just enjoyed it. Love the power. I love the power of software to change the real world. And so, and I like, and I always love to see its impact on small businesses. I think small businesses are really the engine of our economy. They do amazing things. They take risks. They pay their people better. They're really good stewards of the community. So I've always enjoyed focusing on that marketplace. And so I just, you know, you take software and you, and you put it together with business and that's, that's how you, you do it. Oh, it's awesome. It's fantastic. You have the skills to create that and the vision of seeing where to take it. So when I left my corporate job in 2018, after my wife and my websites and our online courses already started to make some money, I dove into marketing services. I built websites for people. I'm a geek with WordPress. I set up sales funnels. I did all of that stuff. But I was always coming in to the challenge of everybody has a different tool set. Everybody has a different problem. And I was basically uh, selling yes. Any any problem they had, I would tell them I could solve that. So help the audience, if they're thinking about going into marketing as an agency owner, how should they get started? Because I know I made several key mistakes in the beginning of just selling any, any problem that those people had. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I come at this from a wildly different angle than most people. So if you look at most people who have a lot of experience in marketing, um, they'll tell you, you know, you really need to sort of systematize your service offering and you know, you really need to productize it. And I think that's all very, that's the right idea. I think the difference though, with what we do or what, where, how we thought about this is, well, wait a second. If you look at services in general, what, and I've, and I've now had an, uh, the, the opportunity to work with literally, gosh, we're going to be at, uh, I think we're at 12,000 agencies now. Um, and so I've worked with thousands of agency owners and I will say that at the, at the large end and at the small end, the, the issue fundamentally that we run into is that services of any kind at some point, off, most of the time get, get canceled. <laughs> and so, and this really, a lot of times, and if, here's, the, here's the crazy thing about it. I, had, I think it has no correlation to skill. It has no correlation to results. It is a totally psychological principle. And that is most people will not pay for a certain amount of, over a certain amount of money every month for anything for any longer than X months. It's just the thing, like you yeah. can't, it's like this invisible barrier. And I think the problem with that is, is people were always thinking, well, if I just do a better job or I show them that I'm getting them 10 X the returns. No, I think it's psychology. I think you get over 30,000 bucks a month or something for a small business owner and they're like, thanks, but no thanks. I don't pay anybody three grand for anything. You know, I, I probably don't even pay that for rent on my building. I'm not paying a person that kind of money, right? And so when I look at this problem, I, I stare at this for a long time to try to figure it out. I realized that ultimately you just can't win. What you need to do instead is you kind of need, you need to think outside the box. And the way we thought about this is, wait a second, what is that thing that small business owners pay for month in, month out that is below that price point that's still super profitable? And the answer is super simple. It was software. And so what we realized over time is, you know, regardless of, of, of the services you choose to sell or not sell, Adding in technology and software on a recurring monthly basis, that is a, that is a yes for everyone. That is a yes for existing agencies. It's, it's small agencies. It's massive agencies. It's people who haven't even, don't even have a customer number one yet. Like there's no one who shouldn't be selling technology as a part of their solution for their customer, right? Yeah, that's fantastic. And I love what you said that uh, the psychology of being able to kind of keep a long term client from a service perspective for a long time, because you're very you're right on when I got started, the better I did, 
the less time I was needed. And not because I failed in any way, shape or form, but because I did my job, I got them success. And you know, myself, I have a background in engineering. I systematized what I needed to do. I essentially served my way out of a job. And so I would have to continuously reinvent myself from going to building a website to now building funnels to now doing ads because every time I fulfill that project, project is done. And they might need some refreshes over time, but you're right. It's not one of those things where you know, once you have a set of Facebook ads, it doesn't, it, it's not the, the same amount of labor every single month once you have things working. So that's, that's right. really, really powerful and a good insight. But the question is, um, I've done affiliate marketing. Uh, you know, we, we love software. If you've seen my channel or anything like that, people in the audience, they know that tech is fantastic. But even though I'm techie, I can't develop software. So when you say people need to sell software, like how do you even get started with something like that? Totally. So, I mean, I think if we take a step back from high level for a second, we look at it just like you said, what are your options today, right? You can, and, and actually here's the first thing to think about as a service provider, are you often bringing tech in or, or dealing with tech recommendations? And the answer is yes. Mm. Right. So you're already um, feeding in this tech into these, into these companies. So now imagine for a second, you wanted to create a revenue stream around that. The absolute best way it possible today is an affiliate situation. But the issue there is you're not in control of the of the revenue stream. I just saw recently a very big, well-known marketing platform change their uh, affiliate structure quite considerably, including sunsetting their prior affiliate uh, commissions as well. And so all of a sudden you're, you have no control of your revenue stream and you still have created this other big problem that I see all the time, which is great marketers come in, they bring in a piece of tech, they bring in their services and it's that combination that creates the amazing outcomes, right? But the clients don't understand that. They think, oh, it's the software, you see, it's this, it's this cheaper tech thing that must be doing all the work. And in fact, that's actually what gets you fired half the time. And so now the tech company who you brought in without them, by the way, paying you any money, oftentimes, they keep the customer, keep the revenue and now you're gone, right? Mm. So we wanted to rethink that. So we said, okay, well, how do we, first of all, how do you get away from people believing falsely that it's the tech doing the job. Well, the number one way you do that is you white label the product. So high level out of the gate, our goal is really simple. We don't want people to know we exist. We want them to know that you exist. So the whole thing's white label end to end. It's, it's your, your URL, your privacy policy, your login screen, like you, everything, your brand, your colors, you name it. The whole idea is really simple. We, we make it easy to, in five minutes, come out with basically your own software platform that you're now selling to your clients. And, you know, what's unique about it is the tech, I, I'm an engineer, I love features to death, but the features are not the, the, the big innovation. In fact, that's what's cool about it. The idea is you're taking these features and you're bringing them to your client. And these are the same things they're going to buy. I mean, you think about it, funnel builders and um, social media posting and website builders and two-way text messaging and hundreds of zillions of other features. These are the same features you can get 20, 30, 100 other places, but the difference is you as the agency or you as the, as the, as the provider are bringing the tech. And the other thing that's really important here is you're bringing yourself, right? Yes. And you're creating that, that magic, that same outcome you were before. But this time, if they ever choose to get rid of you, you're now creating a revenue stream around selling that software to them every single month. And now you're like, cool, I'll see you in three months when you realize that was a dumb decision. But if, for whatever reason, you never realized that that's cool. I'll get the, you know, 200 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever you choose to charge, because that's a great thing. You get to choose what you're going to charge for it. And it, and we don't dictate that. We don't come in and charge you more for it. We don't take a percentage of it. None of that. You get to create your truly your own recurring revenue stream around software. That like so many light bulbs just went off in my head as I heard, heard you say that. that. That's phenomenal. I mean, in just one little one, let's say they do fire you. Guess what? They're going to log into your, your, company's name every time to run their business. And whenever they hit a blip in their monthly bill or they have an issue they can't uh, figure out, they can't just go to any other service provider and say, hey, fix this. Because to them, it's a proprietary software that only this guy, only unbeatable tech can solve that problem. I mean, that's a right. phenomenal idea right there. And also, you're, I feel like you're doing such a service to the just getting started freelancer or agency who's trying to find a way in because I've talked to so many different companies and they are all jaded. They've all had bad experiences working with somebody who had no business 
<laughs> coming in and trying to muck with their stuff. And when you come into a company and they're already running click funnels or they've had several different agencies and they drop them with all these software problems and then they they bounce out, the company right. has so many bad feelings. But when you come in, you can come in with your own package and almost immediately differentiate yourself from every other experience that small businesses has had. I mean, absolutely. At first, Sean, when I was thinking about high level and I was preparing for this interview, I was like, what are these guys thinking? This is a crazy idea. Like, wouldn't you want to build up the brand of the software? But I see your angle and it, it seems to me like you truly do have the, the agency owner's best interest in mind, not necessarily, you know, high levels, even though it's obviously mutually <laughs> beneficial on both sides. That's well, I mean, and, but, but that's, but that's the point, right? So at the end of the day, you know, someday I want, I want, I want to think of myself as a $10 billion company, but not because I make $10 billion, but because me and all the agencies that we serve collectively make that kind of money. And the goal is really simple. Like, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Warren Buffett and, you know, he has all kinds of funny sayings, but, you know, um, he, you know, he's like, you know, he, he always tries to go around and get billionaires to give away 90% of their wealth when they die. And he's, and he jokes, you know, you'd be, you'd be, you know, uh, it's hilarious how many people will tell me, you know, I don't know, Warren, I'm only going to have a hundred million dollars if I, you know, buy onto this plan. So he said, you know, I got to write a book, you know, how to, how to live life on only a hundred million bucks. And, you know, that's the whole point. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to be a billionaire to be happy. And so I, we've, I felt like if we could create a model where we could help other people make money, we would do just fine. Um, you know, I'm not a private jet kind of guy. I'm a, I'm, I'm more about, you know, like, I like, uh, you know, my, uh, my, my, my economy class is just fine. And, and I feel like you can do so much more good in the world if you're willing to share with people. And that's why we wanted to create a different model. But honestly, it, it's also about really doing the real work. I mean, if you go and talk to a small business owner, it's not just saying like, here's a piece of software, have a nice day, or here's a, here's some service, have a nice day. It's like, it's a combination of both. It's an ever-changing field. So like you said, your Facebook ads today, yeah, you can put them in place. You can, you know, get sort of like walk away on that one item, but there are other things that are going to come up and maybe it'll come up tomorrow. You're right. Maybe it'll come up next month, but maybe they come up three months from now. And so you can move around and revisit that, but you need this relationship to be continual. And you need to create this ongoing value. And that's what that software really does. And now they're not getting it. And, and just think about it from the business owner's perspective. Um, today, they are getting bombarded with phone calls and emails from all these other Silicon Valley based, you know, venture capital back mega companies with tons of salespeople. And all they're trying to do is sell them a piece of software that run the other direction with no service, no support, no setup, you know, no ongoing help literally just throwing a tool at them and running away. I mean, that to me does not serve the SMB and it doesn't, it doesn't serve anybody except the software companies and Tristan, and that doesn't make sense in the long term to me. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. And at least in the spaces that I hang out in most, a lot of the software is really geared towards purely online businesses, you know, for blogging or selling virtual products or courses and things like that. Um, but I also know that, you know, my mom, owned a small business. She ran a dog kennel for 35 years. And I scooped a lot of poop in my days helping her out <laughs> with that business. And this was way before I knew anything about uh, digital marketing. And I would see a lot of people bombard her with those phone calls, but she was against technology, like all, all, all together. She wanted her paper calendar. She wanted to do things her own way. So let me just ask you for anybody who's listening and they're like, okay, I see how this could work. But that idea of walking into a business that already has whatever processes they have, how does one begin to say, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Business Owner, uh, we built up some rapport doing whatever it is. If you met them at your you know, commerce town hall, whatever, how do you start to get their mindset to think about, hey, there might be a better way and this uh, software might be the solution well, for you? So per perfect. So I am not a very creative person. So I am a huge fan of looking for other people who are doing this. And sure enough, you know what? There is actually a company out there that is doing exactly this. It's publicly traded. It's multi-billion dollar. Um, it, and um, I'll, I won't throw their name out, but it starts with a T. But what, what's amazing is here's what they are. They are the yellow pages. All the yellow page companies got combined via a SPAC and, and turned into a publicly traded company. If you go look at what they're doing, they're selling software as a service. They're not selling their own software as a service. They're white labeling somebody else's product, not ours, but somebody else's product. And they're selling it on the street using an existing Salesforce, all those, yeah, if you Google, it's amazing. If you can Google your city, the word LinkedIn and this company's name, you will find a local person, a 99% of the time, who is walking around your community selling a white labeled software product. And they're doing hundreds of millions of dollars in recurring revenue. It's, and oh, and by the way, most importantly, 
it's over 300 bucks a month on average, average sale and the churn rate, which means the number of people get it and quit super low. So what the heck is going on here? Well, here's what's going on. You need to walk into a business owner and don't talk about tools because tools, that's the whole point. They don't want to know about tools. That's what all the phone calls are already about. You want to talk about outcomes, right? You want to say, hey, look, do you want more customers? And, it, and this is how the standard issue pitch goes for every single marketing agency, except the punchline is normally that'll be $1,500 a month plus ad spend, right? But this is where you, it's the same pitch, but the punchline is great. That'll be 200 bucks a month. That'll be 300 bucks a month. You choose, right? That, that is exactly what we're doing. We're focusing on the same outcomes with a different price point and a different delivery model, which ultimately is a tool combined with that which you can do to help them on a very inexpensive basis. Super, super easy example. You walk into a business, they, you say, hey, would you like some more customers? They say, great, yeah, I'd love that. How are you gonna do that? You say, hey, you know what? You don't know me, I wanna prove myself to you. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna, how about I just put a bunch of customers through your door this week without any ad spend, what do you think? Everyone says, yes, that sounds great. You say, good, tell you what, give me a list of every customer you, you've ever worked with that you haven't seen in the last six months. They give that list over to you. You set up a text blast campaign. You send out a special. It could even be the, the standard special. These people run all the time. Hey, you know, two for one, whatever. Come on down. Let me know. Oh, I've got five spots, you know, um, that are opening up for this the fitness class or whatever it is. And it is amazing the kind of response you'll get from that. Um, and it's simply, it's simply an easy, inexpensive way to get people to walk through the door. There's no ad spend there. You've just provided them what they were looking for, which is the outcome right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you can leave them with a two or $300 a month bill that they're going to, where you can automate that process every month very easily. Wow. That's amazing. Because also I've spent several, you know, several months and years doing Facebook ads for different businesses. And whether you're doing a website redesign or Facebook ads or setting up a funnel, all of those activities have a huge lead time. It takes a bit of time between, oh, wow. hey, Mr. Agency owner, let's go ahead and do this thing to when you start getting some results from that, even if results ever happen. And especially with things like totally. Facebook ads, th that's a scientific method thing. Like you're you're not necessarily gonna hit it out of the park on the first iteration. Oh, there's so many steps, right? I mean, yeah. you've got the ads, you've got the time, you've got the algorithm. And then even when you start generating leads, you you gotta realize like the, the nurture process, what you know, which we actually started in life automating this nurture process around Facebook ads primarily is where most business owners fall, fall down flat. If, if an elite comes in and you're not on in five minutes or less, boom, every piece of work you did prior to that, every dollar you spent, you just burnt it. You just wasted your money. Yeah. And yet how many business owners will do that? Very right. few, right? Because they're, if you're on the dock kennel and you're out, you know, scooping the poop or talking <laughs> to the customer who walked in the door or checking somebody out, you don't have time. You get back to them an hour later. Oh, sorry, it's too late. I actually went with the kennel down the street. And in fact, what's worse is you helped me think about getting a kennel. And because you didn't respond, you actually paid for your competitor sale because they picked up the phone or they got back to me when you didn't because you were busy, right? That is a lot of steps and a lot of work to deliver a lot of value. And oftentimes that's where agencies fall into this trap of, hey, look at these hundred leads that got you on Facebook this last month. And then the business is like, what are you talking about? We didn't get a hundred new customers. You're fired. You just wasted my money, you know? And it's really like, oh no, but you never followed up with them. Right. I mean, so much work goes into that. And it's not that that's not something you should do eventually, but if all these other basic things like getting customers to come back in the door who, who you've seen before, putting a web chat widget on a website to capture leads that they're not currently capturing and turning those into SMS conversations, software based ways that are easy. There's no ad spend. And it's just this nice recurring $200, $300 a month utility bill. I mean, you can just make so much more money and the longevity there is much higher. I love that. I mean, that's so, so fantastic. And when I got started, I did the exact opposite of what you're saying. And as I'm hearing you speak about this, I'm like, yes, that is a much, a much smarter way. You know, as an example, I'm looking outside my window and I just had a pool table move from a previous house over to this house. And the, the contractor that came in to lug it is like an 800 pound piece of rock. Like, ain't no way I'm doing that. I'm not breaking my back. And so he's dropping the pool table down and he's talking to me and he asked me what I'm doing. And I told him I'd do some digital marketing. And he says, oh, cool. I've got a digital marketer. I don't like them. Our, if, when you Google their company's business, it shows they're permanently closed on Google My Business. And I'm like, that's really hurting you because it's <laughs> you need that. I said, I want to fix that problem. Right. And so I asked him, why is it broken? He says, I don't know. We moved addresses and we can't get it fixed. And I said, hey, like, thank you. I, 
I paid the guy for doing his job. And I was like, hey, before you're done, I want to have this fixed for you. And I'm on my phone. I'm doing the thing on Google. And I'm providing a quick win for uh, that gentleman. Now, we're not working together because that's not really, um, I don't have time for that right now. But the quick win idea of what can you do that's going to be a, an acute pain to your customer that you can turn around in 24 hours to you know seven days that they can you're still top of mind and you're getting results for them. Now, the next day, I just checked Google just to double check that it all worked. And it showed they're open for business. It shows their five-star reviews. It shows their there website you that you couldn't get to before. And so I sent the text to him and he, he said, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> and he asked me if he, if Good he for you. That's with awful. me. Well, yeah, but I, I just, I love what you're talking about with these quick wins. Now, let, let me ask you, uh, Sean, over time, once you serve one, two, five, 10 clients, I know it's important to, product ties, or at least create a special sauce, your signature yeah. program. So I'm trying to piece together the, the dots here where you've got this white label software. How do you as a service provider stand out? How can you be unique from once you've selected your niche to become a specialty there? Okay. So, I mean, I'm very unorthodox in my thinking on this. I don't believe in any of that stuff. Okay. Um, I think that is almost, I, mean, I don't think it's utter nonsense, but I don't think it's as as I think that it, that's the pitch I hear all the time, but it just doesn't check with me. Okay. I mean, it depends on who you are and where you're at, right? Like I know some really, really, really big time players in niches in marketing, but I'll tell you what, the, the way they tend to get there is they tend to be able to only work with the top five to 10% of their markets. They have to, it takes them about 12 years. They have to go to every um, conference up in the, in the country. I mean, it is an insanely big lift. And I think it is one that is well beyond the scope of the vast majority of people. Um, and I think that the easier, quicker win is just walk out your front door, don't specialize in any niche whatsoever, except focus on local, um, go to every single local business and sell them the same 10 features because they all need it and they don't have it. I'm talking about web chat, I'm talking about missed call text back, I'm talking about turning on Google business messaging for them so you can message them off of Google, right? I'm talking about automatically doing reputation management, turning on automated review collection, my one business that I have sold to, one business, my local HVAC guy who came to my house at 12, similar story, 12 reviews on Google, phenomenal job, just amazing job. And I'm like, dude, what is your problem? You look like a joke on Google. And he's like, I'm an HVAC guy. And I'm that's like, okay. I'm like, well, what if I could get you more reviews on Google? He said, how much? He said, three here bucks on. He said, sold. Haven't heard from the dude in six years. He's got 400 plus Google reviews now. I drove by his lot the other day. He has 13 trucks. I'm pretty sure the guy doesn't do any HVAC jobs himself anymore. He's crushing it all off the back of that one thing. And ultimately, that is the point. I think that you can provide, if you're, I mean, everybody's different, right? The guy I know who it happens to be in the top of the HVAC uh, world, he uses all of these same features for his, his heavy hitter, $100 million national plumbing companies he works with. But I think it works for the guy down the street just as much as it works for that, you know, super big niche dude at the same time. They're the same features, same revenue streams, same profit margins. That's amazing. And that's so true. So many people neglect little aspects of their business because they, they just don't have time or capacity for that. And you don't always need to go after the most labor intensive job to solve. Sometimes people like to think they're these heroes, these warriors that they can go in and solve the hardest problem. But oftentimes the hardest problems aren't the ones that yield the most results. And if you can speak to people at the level where they're at. And this is something that I always come back to that I can go down the street and talk about a small business website's conversion rates or their funnels or their split test. <laughs> I can say all these fancy things to laud my own accomplishments and my own understanding. And they're gonna look at me like I'm a Martian with three heads. Speak to them where they're at, like solve the problems that they are actually aware of. And then over time, if you want to, you could just be good and move on to the next guy if you oh. want to. Or you could then get into some of the things once you have that trust built up. I think Absolutely. Absolutely. And in fact, here's what I will tell you. I will tell you that the lowest churn rate agencies that I ever walk meet or walk across or talk to, they're always the same. They're local. <laughs> they're the guys who, who I say, who do you specialize in? They say, nobody. <laughs> I say, how many clients you got? 50 to 100. Where are you at? Oh, St. Louis, Missouri, Portland, Oregon, Denver, Colorado. Um, what do you do for them? Oh, all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, and I, and you know, I'm like, I don't get it. How does that work? But I know, I know why it works. It's because all the businesses they serve are local. They're local. And, th and they can say things like, hey, man, wasn't that storm last week just crazy? Oh, hey, I saw, you know, I saw that our kids are playing on the same soccer team. 
oh, you've got a problem with something that I'm doing for you? Hold on, I'll be right there. Wow. Crushes it every time, crushes it. Because those businesses are local, operate it local and think local. So they want to work with local. And so, and again, it's not a limiter. You start there, you can go national if you want to. You can go to the next town over, you can go wherever you want to go. But the point is you don't have to be niche down. You don't have to be everywhere to be incredibly successful at what you do. That's phenomenal. And that should be so empowering to anybody listening to this because oftentimes people think they need the Google certifications. They need the, the awards of all the different things of showing how many millions of dollars they've sold online that people will never get started and they'll never put themselves out there because they feel like there's such a mountain to climb. But I like that idea that the local business, first of all, they don't care about some of all that stuff. They, if you can give them, like you said, they, they didn't even know that's the other big thing. Right. I mean, it, we can all think about this, like, you know, think about how many people that you go and see every day who have expertise well beyond yours. In fact, Take your, your average plumber. I, I hate to break to most people. I, I will just say it for myself. There's no way in the world they don't know more about what it is that they do than I do. And I'm sure they can throw me with lots of cool technical aspects of their job that I just honestly wouldn't know about, but probably not care about. All I would care is like, can you get the water heater working again? Right, right? exactly. And that's what I want, right? And I think this is how you have to put yourself in your customer shoes. And, and if you ask, it doesn't matter if it's a dentist or the HVAC guy or the lawyer, it's can you get me more, you know, clients, patients, you know, whatever. And if the answer is yes, great, you're hired, you're sold, you know, and how do you create that sale? It's about trust. And I think a lot of times trust is a very local thing to a local business owner. They're going to say, well, I do business with the local bank, not because they're, you know, they're better or bigger or whatever, but because I can trust them because I know where they live. I know how to talk to them. I know how to get access and I have someone there who cares about me. So I don't know if there's a better option. I don't care because I'm not buying the bank. I'm buying, you know, Jill, my banker who does the things that I need when I need them done consistently and, you know, the way I need them. Yeah, I always say that people don't do business with businesses. They do business with people. Like, they, you have to be there and have that relationship. And, you know, all the fancy sales pages and, you know, funnels and all this stuff, they can all help. But at the end of the day, there needs to be a level of trust. There need to be a level of, you know, ideally friendship. And the idea that this person has my back. So I, I totally agree with you, Sean. So let me ask you, we, we've really focused on the local side. And this is me just being curious. Does this yeah. also work virtual? You know, there's a lot of, obviously, there's um, funnel builders. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have, we work with as many coaches and membership folks and all of that as we do local businesses. So it, it, it doesn't matter who you're trying to serve. We have a huge national, like I told you, that guy who serves the top 5% of HVAC folks in the country is very much our customer. We have the same thing in dental. We have the same thing in pretty much illegal. We have the same thing in many, many, many other verticals. It, it works. It, it works for people who are doing, you know, coaching programs, you name it. It doesn't matter. It, the fact of the matter is, is that the same thing applies, which is you need to take all these tools and bring them together. In fact, we have coaches who create coaches, right? And, you know, if you're a new coach and you're just getting started and you are getting coached to be a coach, you ultimately still need the tool set. And, you know, saying, hey, you know what you need to do is go buy all these seven things and string them together with Zapier. Ugh, nobody, you know, that's going to get in your way when it comes to getting started. You just need to be able to put your head down and focus on the sales, focus on, you know, your brand, focus on all of those soft skills that, and you don't need the tech to get in your way. So as a coach of a coach, you can use high levels of platform wide labeled to give your students just a pre-built, ready to go platform that they can just focus on doing the sales focus on creating the brand, focus on your really implementing your coaching, not getting caught up on the tech. Well, you're certainly uh, making my, my head spin with all the possibilities and things like that, because you know, right now my wife and I, we, we teach over 100,000 uh, people, largely mo moms and you know, parents, how to build digital businesses. And that's awesome. The number one thing that holds people back is when WordPress decides to update a plugin and crash their site or when, oh my when God, certain absolutely. things happen and just overcomplicate things or how to connect your email marketing platform to your page builder and all these things where it's like, I don't want that pain for them. And so I, I there, you definitely do uh, bring up a lot of 
the truth because so many people think that okay i need i need this that and the other i need this feature that feature that feature but in reality and this i'm so glad you said what you said it doesn't matter if it's local or virtual because at the end of the day a business is a business and all businesses rely on social proof they rely on being able to follow up with prospects they rely on being able to give them something of value and they rely on being able to take payments and provide services which Definitely. is it honestly, I feel ashamed to admit this, but it was a light bulb that went on in my in my head where I thought the blog was the entire business. And then over time, I realized, oh my gosh, that's just one small thing of this bigger picture, which is the same right. in every other business in the world. So and there's a lot of ubiquity in the features. And you know, to be honest, as a software engineer, I sort of assumed the same thing. I sort of said, you know, you know, I don't get why every plumber isn't going to use plumber soft someday. And every lawyer is not going to use legal soft someday. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what I realized is that, you know, while in, in highly specialized and generally larger enterprises, it's definitely true where you're going to get people who I was like, I have all day long to learn umpty, you know, umpty squad specific software product. So you can go deep with me, go crazy, right? right. I, that's my old job. But for vast majority of small businesses, they don't have that type of time. And as a result, what they need, their needs are so basic, right? That, they, that, that there's a lot of cross-pollination between these features. And really, if you look at the problem that you run into, it's not, oh gosh, you know, I don't think that tool has that really specific feature I'm thinking of. It's, I don't have any time to learn this stuff. Can someone just come in and help me for gosh sakes? And if you, if you have that person and they bring the tool with them, boom, it's money. You just, you win every time. It's the one-two punch because yeah, if, if, if you're providing a service without the software, now all of a sudden you need to learn 47 different combinations of the tools that they might already have yeah. so you can try to implement. Or well, like, and, and think, oh, Yeah, absolutely. So, so two things. One, going back to your differentiation question, the differentiation is really simple. It's you. <laughs> you being present, you being there, you being able to help me. And it's funny because I run a moderately large organization and I will tell you, that um, we hired an outsourced bookkeeping and accounting firm. And I, here's what happened. We had QuickBooks Online and I don't know, some other crazy stuff. They showed up and they said, nope, we don't deal with any of that crap. We use this accounting platform. We use this bill pay platform. We use this expense tracking platform. And you know, I could have gotten cranky about it because I'd be like, well, I don't like this and that and the other thing. But you know, at the end of the day, it was, it's been glorious because the fact of the matter is they come in and they solve the problem I hired them to solve. And I don't care. I don't, I don't have to deal with it anymore. And for them, think about it from their perspective. It's awesome as a provider because now you're not having to adapt to six or seven different combinations of things or versions, heaven forbid, you know, this email marketing program, this email marketing program, and that email. You can really, you want to talk about productizing your service. You need to productize your platform. Yeah. And ultimately by doing that as a provider, you take a, it takes a lot of stress off of me. I love that they know what they're doing and they understand their, their whatever the heck it is they do for me or whatever tools they do use. That's great. It just gets done and I'm happy and I can focus on the things I want to focus on. So I don't think it works any differently as a marketer or as an agency or even as somebody who just wants to go in and help small businesses be successful. Wow. Well, that, that, that is phenomenal. I think I, that's, I want to go play with your platform right now, honestly. Um, but let, two things real fast. So number one is if anybody here is listening and they say, okay, this sounds really cool. How do you get started? I, Sean and I offline, we did talk and he, they decided to give us a longer trial period for Go High Level. If you want to check that out, there should be links in the show notes or in the description on YouTube. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's gohighlevel.com slash unbeatable dash tech. Yep. And uh, so I'll leave all the links down below. Check that out. I will be putting a ton of content out as I experiment with this as I go. And I'm, I've got like a dozen friends that I wanted to help, but I didn't want them to sign up for all these expensive software. But if I go in with my own, as my own software pr providing, I'm going to go get busy and I'll be documenting that entire journey. But let me ask you, Sean. So if people are listening and their light bulbs are going on, kind of like mine are right now, how would you let, like, how would you want somebody to get started? Let's say they have a few clients are already serving with whatever software they have, but they go, uh, they sign up for the free trial. How do we make sure that they are successful? So they become lifetime customers and lifetime providers for these. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Clients. So, so the, so a couple of things, and obviously, you know, we have a customer success team that does all kinds of onboarding and customer support and all of that. But, you know, I would say that the number one mistake I see people make is they say, okay, I want to learn it all. It's like, no, don't do that. There, there are a hundred features today and there'll be 150 tomorrow. Like we're not stopping, right? So um, th that's not how you should view this. You should say, okay, like what's the one thing I could do for myself or for all of my clients that would allow me to replace just one tool, right? Because the reality is if you could replace one tool with this tool for all your clients, you're already moving down that path. 
And then it's, you know, and then it's just, it's incremental. Then it's tool two and tool three and tool four. How can you do just one thing on the platform that's going to make your life easier because it's a standard and it's going to make their lives easier because it's delivering value, right? And if you just start there, right, you're going to jump to the success very quickly. Um, and then and you don't have to worry about learning everything overnight. That's not a requirement of the platform. So let me make sure I understand what you're saying correctly here. So let's say there's 400 different features of Go High Level. You're saying, oh. let's take Google My Business Messaging is one Perfect. feature where a, most businesses don't have that implemented. I go to Google Maps all the time. I like one in a hundred will have that feature where I can click and message. I'm with you. So you're like, okay, that's clearly an opportunity and it's something that's relatively new. So it's an easy thing to go and sell because people love new things. Okay, so sure. you're saying go and learn that feature, take a day and, and play around, create some fake accounts or you know some fake clients and then say, okay, I'm ready to rock and roll. And then go that, yeah. from business to business, get that's started. That's one way. So okay. that's like, hey, I don't have any customers today. Boom, and that's great. Go do that, right? Yeah. Um, let's say you have customers though. Um, what do you, what's, what's something easy, you know, like, oh, oh, I know email marketing. Doesn't everybody do email marketing? Let's do this. Let's just go out to the customers that we have today and either for free or for low, a low price, just say, hey, you know what, cancel your, you know, your mail chip account or your, you know, whatever account we'll actually, we actually have email marketing now. It's part of our platform. Um, we've got the drag and drop builders like MailChimp does and all that. And you can send our processing emails and blah, 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 blah. Learn that one feature and replace email marketing for all your existing clients. Mm. Right. Wow. If you have existing customers and that allows you to get started and it allows you to see the value, show the value. And then your customers are like, wow, that's amazing. And then you can build up from there. So it all depends on how you want to get it started. And again, if you if you don't have customers and you want to start creating value, you know, roll back to the beginning of this conversation, do that SMS blast or, you know, another one I have seen that just crushes it. Um, how many businesses you can go to them? Hey, would you like some more five star reviews on your Google My Business? And I go, well, heck yeah. You're like, okay, cool. Tell you what, this time, give me a list of everybody that you've done business with over the last six months. Put together a text blast campaign. It takes all of about five minutes. Mm -hmm. You can put it in drip mode, by the way, and you have, and I highly recommend that you do. You can drip it out over a week and here's what's going to happen. People are just going to come and give tons of reviews and this business will be like, oh my God, what is happening? This is insane. Um, and then, you know, here's the great thing. You go to them after a week and you say, Hey, how's it going? Like, oh, this is great. It's fantastic. You say, um, hey, would you like this to continue every day, all day, every month, every year? And then say, yes. And you say, great. Tell you what, normally this, this product is like six grand a year. But if you buy for the year today, I'll cut it in half. So just 3000 um, bucks. And we'll just automate your reviews. You get more reviews every single month. What do you think? Tons of people say yes to that deal. And you know what you just did? You just sold an annual plan for your new software package. An annual plan, you just cut your, there's no churn in that 12 months because now they just bought for the year, yeah. right? And you're also financing future growth. If you can do that, now all of a sudden, if you wanted to start running ads to take new people, you got a full right. year yeah. with payment up front. Wow. Totally. Okay. And what did you do? You just gave before you take, you took, right? Yeah. So you literally just, uh, all of these jaded business owners, ah, oh, I've been through it before. Yeah, I've heard the promises, blah, blah, blah. You're not asking for anything. You're just doing, right? You're, you're achieving something. And the great thing is for you, a text message is 0. 0.0075 cents and seven and a half, one hundredths of a cent. It's nothing. It takes you five minutes to set up and it's very, so it's very cheap, right? It's going to cost you two whole bucks to do this for almost any business in town. And you do it. And I guarantee you, I've seen this so many times. They'll just get review after review after review and they'll just be ecstatic with those outcomes. And by the way, their Google rankings will actually go up. That's right. Because Google is paying attention to reviews on Google way more than almost any other signal these days when it comes to local business. Wow, that's amazing. And, and it just takes me back to so many nightmares I've had where I would go in and have that goodwill. I want to go and help you with this. But now I need to get your domain, register a login. I need to go get your WordPress and nobody knows who the <laughs> right. guy is anymore. Right. Who's your DNS? Oh, well, my cousin's nephew's brother's uncle set it up one time, you know, and not right. Go daddy or something. But with it's this, like it all falls apart. It's your platform. You just do it. If you need to make a, 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 a silly domain or even with text, you don't even need it. Oh my gosh. Totally. That, that sounds, uh, takes all the friction away. Um, that's, that's pretty cool. So Sean, this has been a super like eye-opening and enlightening conversation for me. I want to give you a chance for the final word. So uh, one piece of advice, if there's somebody who's still listening to this and they're, for whatever reason, they just maybe don't believe in themselves or they, they're not quite sure to get off their took us and take that first step, what would you tell them from what you've learned working with so many agencies in the past? I mean, it's a, it's a really great business to be in. Um, because you are doing something that's so meaningful to your customer. And more importantly, 
if you go look at Google Trends and and, um, and you search digital marketing agency, businesses have never been looking for digital marketing agencies more than now mm. because they know that digital marketing is important. COVID has taught them this. It really brought this message home. It's it hyper advanced adoption of digital technologies. Small businesses, large businesses, online businesses, local businesses, all of them are looking for ways to grow, and they know these tools are important, and they're looking for people to help them. So people are right now looking for you. So you need to go out and, and make yourself available and present. And I will tell you, it's, it's never been better. It's never been easier to get started because people now understand why this is important and why they need to do it. That's true. The wave is here. It, the choice now is, are you going to ride it or are you just going to let it go yeah, by? Because absolutely. You're, you're totally right. So everybody, thank you so much for listening to this episode with Sean. This has been amazing. I've got goosebumps from some of the things we've been talking about on this episode. So go check it out. If you want to try a double length free uh, trial with go high level you can go to go high level.com slash unbeatable dash tech or there'll be links wherever you are watching or listening to this episode uh sean once again thank you so much for building such a cool platform and and truly having the agencies and the small business owners best interest in mind it's a it's a it's a rare thing to see these days and i just i'm so grateful for you sharing all the knowledge you've shared today awesome well thanks for having me it was great to be here all right take care bye